So tell us, did you always know you wanted to be a singer? Um, I wanted to be a makeup artist actually when I was younger. Really? I didn't um, know that. Yeah, my dad worked for NBC, so he had connections to all the makeup artists there, and I wanted to do that for a long time. And then I was um, acting when I was in high, like middle school, high school, but I was always getting the leads in the straight play, but not in the musicals because I was bad. Um, so, <laughs> I don't believe that. um, so I had a weird low voice and like, you know, it was just a little awkward. So a lot of the, the roles didn't really work. So then I decided to, um, take voice lessons. So I started with, um, taking voice lessons and my teacher was actually an opera singer. So from there I started to train and I learned how to use my voice correctly. And, um, I got much better, much like super quickly um and then i went to tanglewood the boston university tanglewood institute when i was in high school um and then decided that i wanted to pursue it so i started auditioning at conservatories and ended up going to new england conservatory of music in boston um and got a, a very substantial lovely scholarship so i went there well you have such a unique color to your voice um, the first time i heard you sing i was like whoa what a, a unique color <laughs> and you always look for that with singers uh, did you always have that color Thanks. that mezzo that mezzo contralto color was there when you were young yeah it was it was like a, a weird i would say weird a weird a weird voice from when i was younger um i was always you know in high school and stuff i always sang alto too i was always the lowest um the lowest voice part in chorus. And then when I got older, I was singing alto for for a while. But I um, I always had that color, but I think the balance was a little off when I was younger. Um, so it's taken a lot of practicing and studying over the years to even it out. So to have the top match the bottom. And for a while when I was younger, I think I, you know, like physically look like a, um, a pant roll mezzo, like a, a lyric mezzo. So I got pigeonholed in that a lot. So it was That's a lot common of people in the opera saying, field. oh, you should see that. People oh. hear the voice, they yeah. don't know how to place it. <laughs> it mezzos, it takes a long time for the voice to kind of, it's like a bass, right? The It's like a fine wine. The, the voice grows and it, and it kind of grows in different directions. And, you know, like a coloratura singing, uh, you know, singing Faust, or that they're born out of the womb singing those notes. Mezzos, not the same. Yeah, it was a little, it was a little weird. So I, um, you know, I think it took a while because I was getting a lot of conflicting feedback, to be honest. Like some people were like, oh, you should sing, you know, Carobino and, and the like. Um, and then some people were like, you should do musical theater. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of weird. And then again, I just kept studying and evening out my voice and I think really believing in myself and, and working with certain people that did believe I was a contralto. And once that happened and I started really focusing in on contralto repertoire and roles, um, I think I went into auditions much more confidently. Um, and then no one was questioning whether I was a contralto when I would start singing, people were just like, Oh yeah, of course. Um, and I recently got management and they were like, of course you're a contralto. Like that's how we're branding you. So it just feels much more comfy. Singing yeah, it's, it's it's such a there aren't that many true contraltos in the field. I mean, there it's 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 like a high tenors. There there's so few. So when you hear one, it's like oh, it's so special. I think so, but yeah, <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> so now, um, how, have you shifted your repertoire as you went true contralto as you're changing your branding? How has that been? Have you had to learn new roles, or how is that working? Yeah, I think um, in terms of repertoire, it's a little it's difficult finding um good audition repertoire i think that there are lots of roles for contralto but they're not necessarily like the lead role there's so a lot of the times they're kind of bit roles um and so in terms of finding arias i think it's a little it's a little tricky um so it's taken me a while to kind of refine my package and figure it out and i'm adding in some more contemporary arias um, but some of like two of the arias in my package, actually, I'm sorry, three of the arias in my package are um, like excerpts from roles, from contralto roles in operas that the the character doesn't necessarily have an aria, but I've taken a scene or sections and my coach and I have put it together so that I can 
show off my voice and show like this is me singing an actual contralto role, but it's not necessarily an aria. Yeah, it's important to have the, it's so important as a singer to have the right audition package because people have to be given a very clear idea of what you do and what you do well and what your color, your voice is. And I think uh, packaging the the five arias is critical to, to success as a singer. Yeah, and I think I, before when I was in, um, I would say like in my early 20s, um, you know, I was doing a lot of the young artist programs, which are great, but I think packaging for like a young artist program versus when you're trying to work um, at a professional level is a little different. So, you know, as for the young artist version, you need five arias and each one's a different language. You need fast, you need slow, you need, you know, like this variety of stuff. And like right now, I'm actually not offering a French aria. Huh. I mean, I sing in French. I have sure some I French arias. But, you know, I don't want a list of 20 arias that I'm offering. So if someone's specifically doing, you know, an Offenbach operetta, I will sing, you know, a French operetta aria. But if not, if they're just like general house auditions, that's actually not something that I include in my package. Now, are you, are you, are you comfortable in musical theater as well? I know you do both. You know, your opera is very, very good. Do you also do musical theater? Yeah, so I, I do a lot of musical theater. It tends to be musical theater with opera companies. So opera companies that will have a full season and then they'll also do Kiss Me Kate or, you know, The Music Man, stuff like that. Um, so I'm not, I I can belt, but it's not, it's not great. It's not my forte. It's not really what I do. I do more of the... Um, golden say, like, Age, which yeah, is a similar vocal technique, like, right? It's classical, very similar. You know, you know, or things that are like Sondheim, stuff like that. That's not, um, you know, I could do stuff like Jason Robert Brown. That's more talky, um, but I wouldn't sing, you know, the lead in hair. If that makes sense. That would be interesting to hear you <laughs> or do rather, that. You wouldn't want me to. <laughs> <laughs> no one would want to pay for that. So, uh, so I, I, I like counter tenors. I find mezzos, uh, especially contraltos, do a lot of modern too. They mix, they kind of weave the repertoire. You also do a good amount of baroque. Is that correct? Like concert music? Yes. If I honestly, I mean, I love acting and and being on stage and costumes and all that stuff. But honestly, if I can make a career just doing concert work, I totally would. I love concert work. I love working with orchestras and having that intimacy where we're like closer together. Um, uh, yeah, I just, it's great. And it fits my voice well. So it, it feels comfortable. Um, and I, the gigs are usually shorter and <laughs> like you get travels less, kind of you stay, so, you, yeah, it's uh, with an opera, you're on the road, you have to be at the staging rehearsal process, yeah, which is great. I mean, there's certainly, you know, pros and cons to both. Um, but as a, as a working mom, you know, it is, it is challenging. And I think also financially challenging to figure out childcare and, you know, it's just, it's a lot of logistics when you have small children and you're also traveling. Whereas like concert work is, you know, you can like go do it, go home and it's no problem. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very lucky to have performed both operas and concert work with you. And I really just always love your energy. You're such a you're dynamic performer. You're such a great actress on the stage, but you're also such a Thank great you. colleague. So I said, you know, and a fun person to be around. And um, Thank you. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to friends on the show. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I, yeah, it's, you know, I, I do this because I love it and I want to work. Like, I, I feel like I'm at an eight, not that I'm like so super old or anything, but I do, you know, I want to just work with people that I enjoy and that are fun and nice people. And I just don't, I just don't really have a lot of patience for, <laughs> for anything <laughs> you else. And me both. Um, I'm just not really into it. So I'm older than yeah, you I mean, and I, I understand that, but it makes yeah. a big difference working with people you really enjoy to yeah. spend time with makes a, such a, it makes the music better too. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all here, you know, hopefully because we want to make beautiful music and we want to create something together. And I think if everyone has that goal in mind, um, it's fun and it's fun making music with people. And that's my favorite part. 
Yeah, it really is magic. I mean, after a year and a half of being off the the, uh, the stage and not conducting and um, doing primarily this podcast, now that I'm actually really busy conducting, I just did my first two orchestra shows in a year and a half. And it's been like, oh, yeah, I love this. I miss working with my colleagues. And uh, I can't yeah. wait to get back to working with people like yourself and getting back on the stage again. Yeah. Very have you, exciting. Have you, done a fully st- have you done a production or a concert since COVID started? How have you so- been? I have one coming up. So what happened to me and like most everyone else with COVID, the entire was musical I was world, gaining a lot of momentum as a singer, and I felt like I, I really did a great job with the like two seasons ago audition season. I felt great about it, um, and I had a bunch of jobs lined up, and some of them were really exciting for me. Um, bigger projects, bigger roles, um, and then COVID hit and like two years of gigs got just canceled. Like unfortunately for me, none of my stuff got rescheduled um, and none of my stuff got changed into like outdoor performances or like morphed. It was just like flat out, like we're just not doing that show hard anymore, cancel. sorry. Yep. Yeah, just it was a hard cancel for me. And I was like, wait, what? The? You know, and some of the companies did pay me like half of my fee or, you know, something That's like that, lovely. which was very, very nice and super generous, especially um, you know, given the financial state of a lot of companies, it was great and very helpful, but um, super sad. Um, so the last audition I did was through Zoom. I was doing online auditions. So I have a gig like coming up in the fall um, and then I'm making a new recording and I have um, one audition, one house audition set up for the end of this month. And we're just gonna, my agents and I are just gonna send out some videos and just see like Start what, plowing the field again, start yes, getting everything yeah. set up. That's yeah. what we do as artists. So, I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I I have a lot of different groups that I work with and I, either I'm a music director or I guest conduct. And it was so sad, to, it's like you spend half a year programming this stuff and all of a sudden everything's wiped out. But then you know what, Mike, the whole world did that. So we're all kind of in this together. So it's kind of a craziness, but we're going yeah. through it together and we're gonna come back and you're gonna get those jobs because you're fantastic. The job. They will all come. We're putting it out there <laughs> into the universe on the show, and it gets out there into the cyberspace, and hopefully, it gets uh, starts rocking and rolling. So yeah, so we'll put it into the universe. I One called the, this um, show the uh, the art the balance of art and life. So let's talk a little bit about the life side of it. You've uh, been very busy lately. So tell us about uh, some of your some of your good news. Yes. So it's it was a little crazy. So I. Um, so I'll just skip to the end of the story, and then I'll kind of <laughs> backtrack. But. Um, I have two children um, and my second child who is 12 weeks old, she was born in a moving car. So that's the end of the story, the beginning of the story. Now that made the news. I've I've been seeing it all over the news. You've been on interviews on on, on major network television and uh, I know her. (laughs) Like every online, you know, like USA Today people um, today, I mean, like, there's an, I mean, follow me on Instagram and you'll see there's like a bazillion. Um, and then that was on the local news. I was on Inside Edition. I was on a bunch of radio shows. I've done multiple podcasts that are like related to birth, but it was, it was basically, I think, I think the story took off, you know, people give birth all the time. Like I'm not a magician, like people give birth constantly unmedicated. It's not, I'm not necessarily special in that way. Um, and people give birth in cars. That's also a thing. Like usually if you speak to someone, they'll say, oh yeah, I know someone who did, or like my grandma, my grandma or my mom, or, you know, so it's, it's not, I know (laughs) it's, it's actually not super, um, it happens. It's going to happen. It's going to be wherever you are, right? That's the the way it goes. Yes. Birth happens. (laughs) And sometimes it's in a car, but I would say what made, um, my journey a little more unique. And I think maybe what took off from that was the fact uh, well, two things. One, my son was actually a planned C-section. So this was a VBAC for me, vaginal birth after a cesarean, which I was planning on having. Um, but, you know, my first was a C-section. I was never in labor before. So this was my first time laboring. So that's like one thing that was a little unique. The second thing was it was a precipitous labor. So it was about two and a half hours wow. from the very first contraction to baby. That which baby's also, got, got plans and wants to be here. So Yeah, so for a first-time labor, that's also, you know, a little crazy. 
Um, I think the third thing is that I'm an opera singer and I talk a lot about how it was actually a very empowering experience and it was very calm. Um, you know, we didn't, me or my husband who was in the front seat driving, like- Probably not calm for your husband. <laughs> yeah, like he was actually, fun, like he, okay, so I was breathing, I was in the back seat and I was, I had my meditation app that's like specifically geared towards um, labor and I was using, they have a separate app that I was using all throughout pregnancy and like doing meditations and um, preparing my mind. I did lots of preparation in different ways, physically and mentally and, you know, so but like educating Do you go through myself. a similar uh, meditation when you perform? Is that something you've adapted from your performance? You know, I normally, I haven't done, I don't have like a set routine, if that makes sense. I know some people have like, they drink this and they do this yoga workout and they, and I would love to sound super fancy and do that. But honestly, like most of the time I just grab an iced coffee and like warm up for 10 minutes and then I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I really don't. I know that sounds kind of not as exciting. I wish I could say like, I wake up at 5 a.m. and like greet the sun and do the, but I'm You've just got two thing. children. We don't have the time for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't have, no one has time. So, or maybe some people do, I don't. Um, but no, I do. I would say that if I am, um, right before I perform or if I'm doing something that I think is going to take a ton of concentration, I do just find a minute to just center myself and breathe and just look at my music and focus. But I don't necessarily go through my like, you know, I don't open up like an app or anything to, to meditate. Um, but yeah, it was, it was basically a very calm experience. I, there was no screaming involved. I was in the back seat breathing so some things that i i knew through singing that help relax my body i used in labor so relaxing my jaw and just breathing doing low moans of uh, doing lip trills anything that was going to help relax and breathe the baby down and not tighten up so i wasn't screaming there was no high pitch noises um so because i was really calm you know, my husband was calm too. I think if I was in the back seat screaming my head off, he would have, it would have been a different story. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, but I was, I was just kind of hanging out and I thought we were driving to to my hospital of choice. Um, and she just, she can't, I didn't know how, you know, I have no one checking me. I don't, I don't know how far along I am. It's obviously really intense, but I don't know. It could get more intense. Like, I don't know. Maybe, you know, like, you don't know, like, how it could have been another 10 hours. I don't know. Like, it felt really intense. And I thought we were going to make it. And it was only until um, I was feeling a lot of pressure. And I reached down and I felt the top of her head. Wow. And then I just said, pull over. And my husband, happening. <laughs> yeah, and my husband, like, immediately was like, there's nowhere to pull over. Like, casually, he's like, there's nowhere to pull over. There's no shoulder, you know. And then I just said, like, there's a head and he was like, okay. So then he goes <laughs> over and like a couple seconds later, the next contraction came and her entire body just flew out in one contraction. Wow. So I wasn't pushing it just like my body just pushed for me. It's called fetal ejection reflex. And it's just, she just shot out. And then I just said, there's a baby. And my husband turned around like while he was still driving and I'm just like holding this, <laughs> this newborn. Meet so your I daughter. Do, I know. Yeah, so I do credit, um, you know, singing and breathing. And I think, I think other than just the physical, um, you know, lip trills and low moans and relaxing the jaw and stuff like that. I think it was, I think opera helped me and being a performer helped me just for the mental focus. If that makes sense. We're I used think, to being in stressful situations. At a daily yeah. Basis. I think like sometimes we know we've been, we've, we've performed together, <laughs> you know, like it's we've just, been through the trenches a few times situations that are not necessarily ideal and things are out of your control and you can choose to just be like, man, this sucks, man, 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 and like, you know, whatever. Or you can just be like rally and be like, okay, well, this is what it is. And like, I have to do a good job. So, you know, and then you just, you just do the best you can with what you're given and then the situations. That so, is a great lesson for life and for performing or for childbirth or for really anything, right? I mean, yeah, I know. those skills apply so well across the board. Yeah, it just, it was a lot of me just thinking like, you know, I could fight it 
you know, per se, and start screaming and freaking out and losing my mind. Or I could just be like, okay, this is happening. Like, these are really intense. These contractions are close together. You know, all I need to do is just breathe through them. Like, I don't need to do anything. I just like my body's doing it for me. And I just need to ride the waves and just just go along for the ride. So what was it like to meet your daughter for the first time? Please take me through that process. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I was in shock, but she flew out and um, yeah, she was good. She actually, because we did the um, the Inside Edition video thing, they obtained the 911 audio. So they emailed <laughs> that to us. So I actually, listening back, I was able to hear her first cry, which is so that nice. That is wild, that's so, so cool. Yeah, so the things like listening back, you know, cause it was all a blur immediately, you know, after all of that. Um, it was a lot to process. I'm still processing it like three months later. It's just, it's taking me a while to just be like, what was that? <laughs> like, how did, <laughs> um, but it, she, um, it was great. We didn't know the gender. Um, and we found out with my son and, you know, my son was like a plan C section. He was breach. I couldn't find a, a breach provider in time, unfortunately. Um, and we knew the gender. It was like a very planned, organized type A <laughs> birth. <laughs> And then my daughter was just like precipitous, lightning fast, like didn't know the gender. I was only 37 weeks. Like it was just, it all happened so fast. Um, so meeting her was, was What's a little- her name? Oh, her name is Rosemary, Aww. Rosemary Claire. So she's named after my mom and my husband's mom. Beautiful. Um, but it was, it was amazing. It was a wonderful experience and um, yeah, we called 911 after, but she was crying and she was good and I was good. And like, it was, I got to the hospital and I just wanted to get out as soon as possible. So I just told all the doctors, I was like, do whatever tests you need to do and then let me go. Cause I don't want to be here anymore. Good to go. Baby's healthy. I'm healthy. Yeah. Let's I was like, we're out. good. So we left the next day <laughs> and we're, she's great. Now, how, how has it been getting back to singing and did, was there like, did it take recovery time? I know after a C-section, certainly I've had a lot of singer colleagues who've had C-sections, it's a challenge to recover and get the muscles strong and figure out the deep breathing. Was yeah. that a big challenge for you as a singer? Um, I think it was worse with the C-section, obviously, you know, major abdominal surgery yeah. is, is different than, um, you know, giving birth vaginally. And I think, you know, I had a really, it was actually a very smooth, delivery with my daughter like it was it was fast but it wasn't like I had no kind of like physical trauma at all so I felt good I think it's just after you're pregnant you know your organs are all in different places and your abs are split open you know so it's just kind of getting your body like not not visually like back like I don't mean like bouncing back but just like literally your organs and your body like Get your muscles like to agree on each, where they are yeah, and how so, they work. And the contract that I have um, coming up, I signed it in December, but they were figuring out the cuts and they were trying to deal with COVID and figuring out like how they were going to present the opera and how they were going to do it logistically. So I actually didn't get the cuts for the opera until after my daughter was born. So now, so like, so it's, I'm having to learn an entire you know, Italian opera, like a large role with a newborn and a toddler. So that's, I think, a little difficult, but I just, I do a lot of mental practicing. Um, so I'll be holding my daughter, my son will be at, you know, preschool or he'll be taking a nap. And I just speak through my text. I kind of plunk out notes on the piano. I'll conduct myself and just speak my text in rhythm. Um, Your daughter's gonna know the opera just as well. Yeah, she's not into John Adams. I'll tell you that. That's I'm not, I'm not doing a John no, Adams. I did my well. dissertation on John Adams personally, so yeah, I know that I, music really I like, well. I love it. I chose um, one of the arias that I'm learning is um, Pasqualita's excerpt from Doctor Atomic. Oh, I love that show. Um, so, but yeah, but it's you know I'm playing like random, <laughs> random notes. <laughs> my daughter's like not soon super into it. Um, but I have to practice when they go to bed. I mean, it's like I'm exhausted at the end of the day, and all I want to do is order Cold Stone on Seamless and watch Netflix, <laughs> which I do. But I also have to practice. Like, that's my time that I can actually, like, sing for real. Um, 
Having so, kids for me has, has forced me to really structure my life in a way where I can get my work done, be a father, you know, be a, you know, spend time. But but it's a real challenge to like, you know, I'm a night owl naturally, so they go to bed. And that's my time to really delve into scores, do my music stuff. I do a lot of the administrative stuff during the day when I can kind of do it sporadically. But it's the uh, the music stuff has to happen when they're sleeping. Yeah, there is a certain amount of like, you know, I can do a certain amount of mental work during the day but i i do really need like a solid chunk at least i would say like a solid 20 to 30 minutes at least where i can just sing through some stuff and just get stamina going and kind of you know working that it's it's a it's a, a fascinating juggle, but but it's so rewarding. Like you know, my I've, my kids are older. Obviously, I have a 22 year old who's doing the show with me. Of course, Quinn is my producer. I have yeah. twin 18 year olds who are going to college in the fall, which is a wildness in itself. And my youngest is in the Berkeley School in Boston doing uh, the jazz intensive. So yeah. I've got them all over the place these days. Now that they're older, it's funny how the parenting role changes. But I look forward to watching you go through that with your career. And it's such a blessing to have kids who are there and you know you. Watch Watch them grow as people and uh, it's it's an incredible blessing in your life yeah no i love i absolutely love being a mother i um yeah i mean it's crazy you know anyone who's a parent can tell you like there's lots of ups and downs but but i love it and i'm i'm really lucky my parents live close by so they can always help out super helpful yep yeah so just and my husband's really supportive um he certainly know, so, is so it just it you know he travels with me a lot of the times and like we'll take care of our child and we have I have an audition that I have to drive to that's um, a little bit of a trek and he's coming with me we're making a little vacation out of it seeing our friends who live like down in that area and you know we're bringing our daughter my son's gonna be with my parents like it's <laughs> just it it all takes figured out you know it's yeah. a, it's a it's a it's a it's a, like a puzzle you always have to be making the puzzle work but it's it's worth it because you get to really uh, you get to grow with this person and they get to grow with your music it's uh, it's gonna be a, a, a beautiful journey yeah, I think it's also, um, you know, I do nurse, um, well, I was nursing my son, he's done, but my, you know, my daughter, I'm nursing her, and it's, it is hard when you're in the middle of productions and rehearsals to also be like, I have to schedule in pumping sessions and figure yep. that out, and, um, you know, my most, I think it was my most liked Instagram post was one of me, like, in a dressing room when I was on tour, and I had like full makeup and gigantic eyelashes and a huge fan. And I'm like in the mirror and I'm pumping. And people yeah. were just like, thought that was the most fabulous, you know. Well, that's, that's life. That's the artist's life. life. Yeah, right? I mean, it was literally. The glamorous like, part that they don't see on the stage. I'm singing and I immediately run back and I'm like ripping off my clothes and quickly pumping during intermission and like looking at my music and like taking a quick shot for Instagram and then like <laughs> back to work back on the stage. Out, like where do I put the milk and you know it's just it's all over the place but well you are a wonder woman and that is incredible and <laughs> um but you know what if you want to have a career in the arts this is what they don't teach you in music school right yeah you just have to juggle a lot of different things and that's um but I wouldn't you know I wouldn't trade it for anything it is no, it is what it is like and they're only little ones and then you know it's so special it'll get easier <laughs> When they get older, they start working with you. I, my, mine work with me. Mine help me set up the stage when I'm on jobs. It's like they, they know how, where the scores go. They know how to set the chairs up. If I'm, if I'm booking a show, if I'm conducting a show where I'm booking personally. So we have a whole team worked out now. My daughter does some of my PR. My son can do all my videography. It's really quite wild how you can, like, they become Put them they to work. work. <laughs> yeah. I've been putting them through uh, life for years. Now we go on a show together. It's a blast, actually. Yeah, that's great. But kids are wonderful. And we have something else in common. My father was born on the Brooklyn Bridge on the way to the hospital. And there was traffic. See? Every literally <laughs> everyone I talk to, they're like, Oh yeah, I was born in a car. Someone else. It's, it's a little a bit thing. of tram trivia. It's a thing. Sometimes babies just come when they want to. That's gonna be what it is. You and can't you not. God plan you know, we plan and God kinda of laughs. Yeah. Very much so. So how do you think um, COVID is going to change our industry? And uh, what are you looking forward to in the next year as we get back to the stage again? Um, okay, well, I'll start. So I will say, I don't think that I am in a position to say like how it will change the industry. I just think there's probably a lot that companies are dealing with that I'm not aware of. I would say, um, 
I could probably say that a lot of companies are struggling. I think that's that's a fair good. assessment. I would I would agree with you there. Um, but I think you know in this there's been a lot more outdoor performances, which I always love. You know, like places like Caramore. Like I used to go as an audience member and just hang out, and I love outdoor. I know Opera North in New Hampshire is starting to do that. They had this huge. Um, I just yeah. heard from uh, my dear friends who are uh, the Corsons who are up there that they love their Bohem production, which was outdoors in a tent. Yes. I'm, I'm a part of the Phoenicia Festival, which is doing Pagliacci in a couple of weeks. And yeah, uh, yeah you're seeing tons outdoor, of these. Like for me as an audience member, I would much prefer to go outdoors. Like for this is me personally, I would love to just go somewhere, have a bunch of food trucks, have a bunch of like beer and wine stands and you bring a blanket and your chair and there's like live music like a tanglewood or you know they've been doing like that. that in italy for a thousand years right italy yeah. greece right of course that's what I makes mean, the summer festival so special it's just so nice i love stuff like that i mean indoor you know has its place certainly the gig that i have coming up is in a, a huge mansion outside of boston and cool. the audience moves with us into different rooms so each room is like a different sounds like clue i love it yes <laughs> unfortunately it's not a murder mystery um but, but someone cool. will die. No, no one I will do. Die. I do like things like that. So I think, um, you know, companies have definitely been innovative. Um, and I hope that that's something that sticks around. I think um, doing stuff online, not necessarily like full operas and putting them online, but I think um, kind of upping everyone's game with social media has been a thing that I've seen, which has been nice. Um, but that's really all I can speak to with this. I, I'm not with... Um, like companies moving forward. I think looking forward in the future is just like performing. I just want to perform again. And I know um, like the company that I'm, that I have the upcoming gig with, they're requiring that everyone is vaccinated. That's just like a flat out, like you just can't perform if you're not vaccinated. And I know that there, um, you know, there's lots of fun opinions about all of all of that yeah, stuff, in the but... middle of it with lots of jobs right now i mean yeah. uh, it's it's not going away this is going to be here for a while yes. for a long so, time you know i know everyone has different opinions um and some of them agree you know so anyway it's we're, a heated we're extremely topic, divided sure. we're extremely divided i i mean I'm, yes. I'm you know you know i do a summer job and we have a large chorus and we've been singing all season and it's been uh some people wear their masks and they that's their choice and i said you can wear your mask we we, we have distanced them quite a bit some people sit in the audience as they're practicing and we've also had online rehearsals people can practice at home so it's been a kind of an experiment because uh, we're all going through this for the first time every company is trying to stay abreast of the science and the, the recommendations and sometimes you've got different cdc has one thing and the governor of the state will have a different thing so it's like how which one do you go by and yeah and so then the audience all together members, some of them are cool with you know more um you know like safety and then not necessarily in quotes. Some, you know, it is safe. I'm, I'm fully vaccinated for reference. Yeah, me too. And I'm um, like, if, uh, I would be vaccinated you know, three times if they let me. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I just want to get back to work yes, and be a safe as possible. Yes. Um, you know, and then some people aren't, but it's like I know for the performance I have coming up, like the entire cast and crew has to be vaccinated. Every, you know, the all of the orchestra members, as well as the audience, needs to show proof of vaccination, and the audience needs to wear masks. Oh, okay. Well, you got to do what you have to do. You know, in a smaller place like maybe a, a private mansion, even a big mansion, you're still in the same, you know, in an outdoor performance, the air recycles every second or so or every two seconds. But, you know, these are things we have to, we're all going to be experimenting this together. And you can't be too careful when it comes to people's health, especially if you have elder people, elderly people in the audience or, you know, it should, we should all have to be, we all have to have, have some grace because we're all feeling this out together, really. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't know who the audience is going to be, but probably some old people and, you know, we have <laughs> with opera, it's pretty, pretty good likelihood. It's, so, it's, it yeah, tends to, to skew like, older. protect our only audience, um, <laughs> you know, but also, you know, I'm traveling with my daughter who is 12 weeks and can't and be vaccinated, not vaccinated. So, yeah. You know, I so guess. there's, you know, we all have to be, uh, everyone has to be, I've had to tell people, we have to be reasonable. We have to be kind of gracious to each other because we're all just going through this for the first time. This has never happened in the history of our industry. Like the Metropolitan Opera has never closed for more than two days. 
okay, like maybe a week, the longest. A blizzard, 9-11, I mean, these things like, you know, these are the things that have closed the Met and Broadway in the past. We've never had this before in the history of both of those organizations. So we're all kind of feeling this out, and it's uh, it's going to be quite an experiment this year. Yeah, for sure. Emily, it's always great to get together with you. You are just such a, like a, a ray of sunshine. Keep on making great music. Um, oh, how yeah. can people find out more about you, and where can they go to your social media channels? Um, I would say I'm most active on Instagram. So I'm Emily Geller on Instagram. My website's emilygeller.com. Um, and I'm on Facebook, I'm Emily Geller Hardman, which Hardman's my married name. But people are welcome to reach out. Um, I would love to chat if anyone has questions. I have all of that crazy birth stuff and <laughs> up it's on great, there. It's a, um, quite a unique story, and people should check that out. Learning more about that, um, I'll be posting some upcoming singing stuff. I haven't made like an official post about the next the next gig, um, but I'm doing that. And I'm making some recordings, so stay tuned for some fun audition recordings coming up. <laughs> Well, I know you got you're heading to a you're heading to a voice lesson, getting ready back back in the trenches, and for a very busy year to come. And I look for, I wish you continued success. Thank you. Thanks so much. You too. And hopefully we can work together soon. I well, hope great. so. The sooner the better. Yes. Thank you for joining us on Music Matters with Jason Tram. Please remember to subscribe to us here on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, you name it, channel it, follow us there. Uh, to see our over almost 200 past episodes, you can go on our website at www.jasontram.net. Again, that's www.jasontram.net. You could also hear us on the radio on New York City on WMCA. That's 102.3 FM and uh, 570 AM. AM and uh, from 1130 to noon. So that's on WMCA. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, keep music alive.